drop the amendment to be passed forthwith. In addition, and as a natural follow-up to its passage, various legislative and administrative bodies at all government levels, as the guardians and trustees of the next generation, would do well to intensively re-examine and respond to the needs of public education in our country. It's not just any interstate highway, this final stretch of road, and it wasn't just any ceremony that opened it either. The officials of Highway District 17 put on a hamburger luncheon for the nearly 500 visitors who came to Fairfield for the occasion. Everybody was there to remember the 12-mile segment between Streetman and Fairfield that has been termed the most dangerous stretch of road in the state. Among the happiest of visitors was DPS patrolman Jim Keller. Keller has patrolled Highway 75 for eight years. As the eaters ate and the speakers spoke, Keller reflected on the 50 or more fatal accidents he's investigated in those eight years and thought of the future when the four-lane divided highway will make his job a lot less risky and a lot easier. Keller says the worst year on the outdated blacktop road was 1967, when 15 people were killed just between Labor Day and the end of the year. Already this year, 14 motorists have lost their lives on the 12 death-dealing miles, and the highway department has taken drastic steps to try to cut down the toll. Those steps include special signs to remind motorists of the danger, as well as special skid-resistant pavement. But as patrolman Jim Keller looked into the future, the old two-lane highway moved into the past. As Highway Commission Chairman DeWitt Greer snipped the ribbon to open a new interstate, officials closed the circuit symbolizing the completion of the highway link, and the final segment was opened with a bang. This is Phil Reynolds, Channel 8 News on the move.
Okay. One more time, please. Well, uh, most of the go for the house uh, about probably a month and a, about a month and a half ago. Our house burnt down and we lost everything we had, so we buying a new home and most of the money go for the house. You say most of the money. What's the rest of it going for? Well, uh, I'm gonna buy me a motorcycle with your mother's approval. Yeah, she she approved it finally. <laughs> well, congratulations. Thank you. We are submitting to you for your consideration at this time uh, a budget that calls for $44,760 for the operation of the Triethnic Committee. This would include $14,310 uh, or in that neighborhood for salaries, $9,100 for supplies and materials, $6,000 for contracted services, $3,250 for capital outlay, $1,000 for operation of plant, $1,100 for transportation, and then set aside in other parts of the budget for the purpose of conducting an independent uh, evaluation. The CPD faculty representatives have spoken through their assembly, expressing the deep concern at the deterioration of the conditions under which Dallas teachers are working. Unless these working conditions improve drastically, there will be, in my opinion, an exodus of the finest, most qualified, most concerned teachers in the district.
This is one of three prime sites that the city of Cleburne is showing the Texas Department of Mental Health and Mental Retardation. The presentation stems from an effort by the MHMR board to build another school for the mentally retarded. The Denton State School, bearing the brunt of treatment in Texas, is now overcrowded, and there's a waiting list of over 1,000 patients. So there's going to be a new school somewhere. The committee is looking at eight towns, Ennis, Hillsboro, Waxahachie, Dallas, Fort Worth, Arlington, and Grand Prairie. Cleburne was the second city tour today, and when the board arrived at Cleburne Airport, members were greeted by perhaps the biggest selling job in present memory. Downtown businesses released their employees for an hour to go to the airport. A local school formed a 1,200-member welcoming corps, and in general, Cleburne citizenry pulled all the stops to persuade the committee to build a school in this town. Is the selling job worthwhile? I talked with Dr. David Wade about what his board is looking for in a site. The uh, bill that was passed states that we should place a school in the area serving the greatest number of Texans in need of service. Our surveys have indicated that this is the Northeast Texas area. In view of the fact that there is already a school north of Dallas, it was our feeling that if we placed a school south of the Dallas-Fort Worth area to serve the area south of the Dallas-Fort Worth area, we would uh, uh, be fulfilling the legislative intent. To what extent does community enthusiasm play a part in the decision? Well, I think community enthusiasm is very important to the heart blood of uh, the successful operation of a school is the volunteer council. Uh, they do uh, such things as give parties for the students, uh, they take them on shopping tours, and they provide services that the state can't buy, such as uh, an all-faith chapel for the campus, uh, such as possibly a swimming pool, and many other things that would be impossible for the state to purchase. So a display like that in Cleveland today is impressive to the community? Very impressive. This has been a very impressive uh, presentation. We certainly appreciate it, and we certainly can feel and see the enthusiasm of Cleveland for our cause. The MHMR board will no doubt make their decision sometime in November on the basis of sound, practical considerations. But if there's a toss-up, you know that the welcome the members received here in Cleburne is going to carry some weight. J. Lewis, Channel 8 News on the Move in Cleburne.
Well, yes, yeah, similar in that he will move out of the pocket and run quite a bit. Uh, and he's a better runner than, than Fran is. But uh, that's about as far as it goes at this point because Fran is such an experienced quarterback that he can keep you and maneuver you and, and be very effective. Where Archie's still learning, he's going to be a great quarterback someday, but hopefully we'll keep him out of being, having a hot hand in this particular game. When Calvin Hill returns to top form, will you alternate your three running backs the same as you operate, alternate your quarterbacks? Well, I feel like that we're going to use uh, all three running backs. We feel like we've got three exceptional boys. Now, when you got that on the bench, then you'll try to use them all to keep them all at top form so that if you do have an injury like Hill, uh, then you can move them in and they're ready to go without any lost motion. You started Cliff Harris at safety this week. Did that bring about the desired improvement you were hoping? Well, it's hard to say at this point whether it brought about exactly what we wanted because our club played much better uh, in, against New York. Defensively, we played better. We hustled and moved better uh, than we have for some time. And I think only time will tell whether or not uh, 